You know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about Kamala Harris. You know, either you're soft on crime or you're tough on crime. And instead I suggest we should be smart on crime. You can do anything and you can do everything. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. For this list, we're looking at interesting facts about the vice president-elect of the United States. Did you know these details about Kamala Harris? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, her ancestry is Indian and Jamaican. She was part of a global conversation around race and identity at an early age. Kamala Harris was born in California in 1964. Her mother was a cancer researcher from India named Shamala Gopalan, and her father was Donald J. Harris, an economist from Jamaica. She just really grew up in a very multicultural environment, but her mother raised her and Maya as black women because that's what they were. Her parents met while they were both studying at UC Berkeley and pursuing activism. Growing up in a multicultural household certainly affected her worldview, and after her parents got divorced, she lived in West Berkeley, a neighborhood with a significant black population. She attended both a Hindu temple and a black Baptist church, where she was a part of the children's choir. Number nine, she led a demonstration at the age of 13. Well, the one thing about Kamala, she's consistent. She's the same person <laughs> now as she was then. Kamala has a long history with activism. Her parents would even take her to protests when she was an infant. I remember her being like sitting in the front of the circle. She was very attentive. She was paying attention. When Kamala was 12 years old, she moved with her mother and younger sister Maya to Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where Shamala Gopalan was teaching at the Jewish General Hospital, which is affiliated with McGill University. At the young age of 13, Kamala held a demonstration in front of their apartment building with her sister's help to protest the fact that children were not allowed to play on the front lawn. She was one to not let anyone tell her who she was. Their efforts were successful, and they managed to have the policy turned around. Number eight, she went to Howard. Thank you for joining us here at my alma mater, Howard University. Kamala attended the French elementary school Notre Dame des Neiges in Montreal before enrolling in Westmount High, where she completed her high school education in Canada. It's such a surreal feeling that our school, our public school in Quebec, managed to bring out a vice president into this world. She then attended Howard University in Washington, D.C., which is known as one of the top historically black schools in America. Her major was in political science and economics, which was the perfect stepping stone for a career in politics. She also managed to have some fun as a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. After graduating, she went to law school back in California at the Hastings College of the Law. Number seven, she was California's first black female DA. Either you're soft on crime or you're tough on crime. And instead, I suggest we should be smart on crime. Kamala Harris's official career in the world of politics began when she got a job with the Alameda County District Attorney's Office as a deputy DA. She later moved to the San Francisco District Attorney's Office. I, Kamala Harris, I, Kamala Harris, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. It was there that she made history as the first person of color to become the District Attorney in San Francisco. She simultaneously became the first black female DA in all of California. In 2010, she made history again as the first woman of color to be elected as the Attorney General of California. I think that we need to have um, laws that, that, that are primarily concerned with keeping the community safe. She was later chosen to continue the role for a second time in 2014. Number six, she was friends with Bo Biden. And ever since I received Joe's call, I've been thinking, yes, about the first Biden that I really came to know, and that, of course, is Joe's beloved son, one of his beloved sons, Bo. When Kamala was attorney general, she became friends with Joe Biden's late son, Bo Biden. Their relationship formed while he was Delaware's attorney general. Over time, their professional relationship became a more personal one. They worked together in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis when they were both tasked with dealing with developing housing issues. In her memoir, which was released in 2019, Harris said, quote, There were periods when I was taking the heat when Bo and I talked every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And let me just tell you about Bo Biden. I learned quickly that Bo 
was the kind of guy who inspired people to be a better version of themselves. He sadly passed away in 2015. Judging by Kamala's words, she will never forget the time she spent with Beau. Number five, she got married for the first time at 49. Anyone who still hasn't found their true love later in life can take inspiration from Kamala Harris's story. Uh, we are a partnership. So. <laughs> <laughs> she married attorney Douglas M. Hoff in California in 2014 when she was 49 years old. Although she once dated Montel Williams, yes, the talk show host, Harris had never previously married and didn't have any children. Emhoff had two children of his own from a previous marriage, and they adorably call their stepmom Kamala, Mamala, as a term of endearment. And I've had a lot of titles over my career, and certainly vice president will be great, but Mamala will always be the one that means the most. Number four, her favorite books. In 2019, Kelly Jensen of Book Riot reached out to a number of presidential candidates to ask them about their favorite books. Kamala Harris was the first of the Democratic candidates to answer the request and named five books among her favorites. We learned that she loved Native Son by Richard Wright and The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. Each week they hoped to be lucky, and that hope was their only joy. Harris was also a fan of the enduring classic Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, as well as the extremely popular novel The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. <laughs> For me. But most people would likely identify with her love for childhood favorite The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Have you forgotten the laws upon which Narnia was built? Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. Number three, her policies targeted vulnerable people. I am personally opposed to the death penalty, but I, I will follow the law. While Kamala Harris's glass-shattering political career is impressive by any standards, the path that brought her there is often criticized for being overly punitive to the less fortunate. During Harris's time as a state prosecutor, she proudly labeled herself as top cop and pursued policies that appeared to actively target some of California's most vulnerable residents. Most notably, her office objected to sex workers, calling decriminalization, quote, completely ridiculous, and websites like Backpage that afforded protections for people in that line of employment were shut down. So while Kamala has become a shining beacon for progressive values, it's understandable that many continue to hold misgivings about her record. When it comes to the resources that local law enforcement needs, police chiefs, sheriffs, we've got to give them the support. Number two, she's friends with Barack Obama. After seeing both of these politicians in the public eye, it should come as a surprise to no one that they're friends. Kamala Harris and Barack Obama are longtime buddies. There were even rumors that Obama considered her for a position on the Supreme Court and as his attorney general. Back in 2008, she was one of the first prominent figures in California to endorse his presidential run. People of our country, are they really are full of hope. On one occasion, Obama got into a bit of hot water when some thought he was a little too friendly towards Harris. When he referred to Kamala as the, quote, best-looking attorney general in the country, his critics deemed the comment inappropriate. You are doing great. You will continue to be doing great. Thank you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Her supporters are called the K-Hive. Supporters of Senator Kamala Harris from the K-Hive tell Newsy her Democratic National Convention speech gave them a new sense of inspiration moving toward the election. She loves french fries. Her grandfather was a public servant, and her grandmother was an activist. She collects Chuck Taylors. I love my Chucks. You know, I think it's, maybe people don't expect it, but I think it's also, I think it's a statement about who we really are. Like, everybody's got their inner kind of Chuck look, right? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the meaning of her name. It's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. Kamala Harris's name has been a hot topic since she was announced as Joe Biden's running mate because many people seem to have trouble pronouncing it. She's a U.S. senator now running to be vice president, but some people still don't know how to say her first name. She got her name from her mother, who chose it because of their Indian roots. Kamala primarily means lotus. Her name also makes reference to the Hindu goddess Lakshmi and stands for female empowerment. It's, a, it's, it's about respect and it's about respect for all that comes with a name, right? Which is, it's also about family and that everyone comes from 
somewhere. There's one more thing Kamala got from her mother, her motto. She lives by the words, you may be the first, but make sure you're not the last. Those words certainly seem more poignant than ever now that she's been elected as the first female vice president of the United States. While I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.